Also now on BBC One, dreams become reality. For four incredible weeks in a row, student Jez Chesters and his girlfriend Laura have travelled the world and lived life at the very top in Sydney, Las Vegas, the Caribbean, and this week on the ski slopes of Aspen, Colorado. But back here in Britain, there are six people who are desperate to steal his jet set lifestyle. They are Mark Hobson, a flight attendant from Somerset, Sue Jeffrey, a barmaid from North Wales, Paul Aubrey, an architectural consultant from Buckinghamshire. Julia Hardy, a PA from London, Jeff Melling, a production operative from Wiltshire, and last week's runner-up, Carolyn Burrows, back for a second chance. Any one of them could triumph and win the week of their dreams on the jet set. <laughs> Saturday night, and from the BBC Television Centre in London, it's the National Lottery Jet Set, with this weekend's Thunderball, National Lottery and Lottery Extra Draws, plus a chance to win a trip of a lifetime. Now, please welcome the man who can help you live that luxury life, Eamon Holmes. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, Alan, thank you. Good evening. This is The Jet Set, the show that gives you the fast track to your fantasy life, as well as maybe making some millionaires with the three lottery draws. We've got a titanic struggle coming up tonight because, incredibly, as you probably know, our current liver of the good life, Jez Chesters, is going for his fifth week of glamour and glitz. The Jet Set Tour takes you to those places you've only ever dreamed about, then for seven days transports you to seventh heaven in a life of total opulence. Jet Set truly is luxury without limits and what sets Jet Set apart is if you keep winning you keep moving on which is how Jez has managed to spend four amazing weeks in the world's top destinations in fact if he wins again I think we're gonna have to rename the show Jez Set yeah yeah it's a good ring about it hasn't it now so far he and his girlfriend Laura they have been to Sydney they've been to Las Vegas they've been to the Caribbean and right now they're enjoying a little Apre ski in Aspen, Colorado, from where we can join them live via satellite. There they are there. <laughs> hey, you two, why don't you just give somebody else a chance? No way, don't want to come home yet. Not a chance. <laughs> now, I have to say, your tans from the Caribbean go very well against that lovely contrast there, that snow behind you. Just describe to me where you are and what's around you there. Well, we're actually in, uh, sorry, on one of the balconies of our hotel, the St. Regis, um, and you can see the Rocky Mountains behind us in the background. Beautiful oh, scenery. Goodness, beautiful scenery. And what about the skiing? How did that go? You just wouldn't believe what we've been doing. I could explain it all in graphic detail, but you, you just wouldn't believe me. <laughs> but you don't have to because we have got the pictures. Let's take a look. Leaving the Caribbean was tough, but when we found out we were coming to Aspen, we were just both absolutely over the moon. Never skied before, but I know that Aspen is the ski capital of the world. You reckon you get used to it? Yeah, probably. Before my first ski lesson, I was really nervous, but had an excellent instructor, the best, got me confidence up straight away. Hi, my name is James Carr. Hi, I'll Jeff. be your ski instructor Hi. for the Hi, day. Laura. In the afternoon, it took me up to the top of the mountain. And when you look down from the top, it was a bit scary. Lost a bit of confidence and started falling over a lot. But, hey, it's only snow, you know what I mean. Um, nice and soft landing, a lot of fun. And before long, I was skiing with the rest of them. It was great. When we went to Kriblunik uh, for the dog sled ride, it was unbelievable. They've got 270 huskies up there, but to actually get out on the back of the sled with 10 of these dogs pulling them, it's just like something out of a fairy tale. It's something you see in films, but something you never get a chance to do. Since we started living the life of the jet set, um, we've got to play with all these toys that you just see in films. I mean, we've had seaplanes, helicopters, uh, snowmobiles, and these things are just unbelievable, man. You've just got to try them. It's like jet skis, but over snow, they go faster. You can go anywhere you want on them, and it's just such a rush. 
This is the Aspen Club Spa. This is a place where all the rich and famous come for a good dose of pampering after a hard day on the ski slopes. And that's exactly why we're here, because we're living that lifestyle. If this gets any more relaxing, I think I'm going to fall asleep. After a long day, it's really time to get down and do some work. A bit more on the shoulders, please. It's definitely getting harder and harder by the week, but keep bringing them on, because I'll keep knocking them down. <laughs> You know, it, it's so good to see you both enjoying it so much because, Jez, you have won it fairly and squarely and it's really nice to see you both uh, enjoying it so much. You said in the film that Aspen is the haunt of the rich and famous. Have you seen anybody famous? Is there anybody rich and famous in town this week? Um, we haven't actually seen anyone famous, but apparently uh, Steven Spielberg, Matt Dillon, Luke Perry, they're all in town, so we're yeah. in good company. And you know what they'll be saying? They'll be saying, do you know Jez Chesters and Laura Gold are here this week? That's what they'll be doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, remember, Jez is still the only person who knows what life with the jet set is really like, but that could change tonight. Indeed, you could be playing for that lifestyle too. Just give us a call. Uh, on our contestant hotline if you fancy being pampered to within an inch of your life. I'm going to give you that number again towards the end of the programme, so hang on for that. But for tonight, six contenders to Jez's throne. The road to victory starts right here. Carolyn, you're back again. You're back for your second week as last week's beaten finalist. What would your dream be for your Jet Set week if you were to go that one step further tonight? I'd love to take John to an exotic location, just the two of us, because I have a little surprise planned. And Jez, it's a good job you've got your winter coat on. It's cold in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. We've got some tough nuts for you to crack tonight, Jez. OK. The, uh, the gauntlet has been uh, thrown down. And as we've seen there, Jez, of course, travelling with Laura, who's his girlfriend. And because it is Valentine's Day and Wednesday, all our travelling partners this week, well, they're actually the husbands, the wives, the girlfriends, or boyfriends of all the contestants playing tonight. They're all couples hoping to win the ultimate romantic trip <laughs> and good luck to them the talking's over which one of these six will be going head to head with jazz let's find out as we play for the jet set in the first game the object is to stay out of the red i'm going to give the contestants a question category which they can play or pass to someone else get a question wrong or pass incorrectly and they're in the red if they are there at the end of the round, that will be the end of their dream of joining the jet set. Start the clock. Mark, we're with you. The category is television. Do you want to play or pass? Can I play, please? Here's your question. Who's the voice of Bob the Builder? Neil Morrison. It is. Well done. Sue, geography, play or pass? Play. In which continent is the Sahara Desert? Africa. It is. Paul. Sport, player pass. I'll play, please, Eamon. The football club, Celtic and Rangers, play their home games in which city? Glasgow. They do. Julia, music, player pass. Play, please, Eamon. Who's the lead singer of the band Pulp? Jabs Cocker. Yes, just on the buzzer. Well done. Jeff, mythology, play or pass? I'll pass to Carolyn. Carolyn, in Greek mythology, who was the king of the gods? Neptune. No, Zeus, you're in the red. Mark, literature player, pass. Can I play? Whose fictional diary did Helen Fielding write? Bridget Jones. That's right. Sue, celebrities, do you want to play or pass? I'll play. Name Liam Gallagher and Patsy Kensett's son. Lennon. Yes. Paul, science player, pass. I'll play for you, Which planet lies between Earth and Mercury? Jupiter. No, Venus, you're in the red. Julia. And we didn't ask the category. We've come to the end of the round. The red light moved away from Carolyn and landed on you, Paul. That's the end of the jet set for you. Over so quickly. Back to work Monday by the looks of it. Yeah, the dream is gone and so have you, Paul. Our six have become five. We continue the game now with Julia. Start the clock. The category is film. Player pass, Julia. Play, please, Eamon. Sam Mendes won a Best Director Oscar for which film? I have no idea. American Beauty, you're in the red. Jeff, geography, play or pass? I play. What is the capital of Finland? Helsinki. Yes. Carolyn, food and drink, player pass. Play. What type of uh, fruit is honeydew? 
honeydew. A melon. It is well done. Mark politics player pass. Can I play, please? Who is the mayor of London? Ken Livingston. He is. Sue Nature, play or pass? Play. What name is given to a female fox? A vixen. Yes. Jeff, sport, play or pass? I play. Who is the current England cricket captain? Nasser Hussain. Yes. Carolyn, history, play or pass? I'll pass to Julia. Julia, in which year was the Berlin Wall taken down? 1989. That's right, that puts Carolyn in the red. Mark, literature, play or pass? Can I play, please? In Peter Pan, which animal swallows an alarm clock? Crocodile. It is the crocodile. Sue, radio, play or pass? Play. Who hosts Radio 1's Sunday... I'll finish the question. Who hosts Radio 1's Sunday lunchtime show? Is it Jamie Thigston? Sue, you're right. And Carolyn's in the red. <sighs> Carolyn, after last week going so close, it must be a big disappointment. I'm speechless. Yeah, well, your Valentine's Day could have been spent living the jet set life. What will you be doing now? I'll be spending it in Accrington. With John. With John, But yeah. at least you're together. Bye-bye. Yeah. We continue the game with Julia. Start the clock. The category is geography. Player pass, Julia. Pass to Sue. Sue, what do the letters PH stand for on an ordnance survey map? <laughs> you should know. You work in one public house. <laughs> right. Jeff, food and drink. Player pass. I play. How many standard bottles are there in a magnum of champagne? Two. Well done. Mark Sport, player pass. Can I play, please? Who is the famous chairman of Watford Football Club? Elton John. Yes. Julia, celebrities, player pass. Play, please, Eamon. What is the name of actress Kate Hudson's famous mother? <laughs> it's Goldie Hawn. You're now in the red. Jeff Nature, player pass. I play. The kiwi bird is native to which country? New Zealand. Yes. Mark TV, player pass. Play, please. In the BBC series, who plays the character Jonathan Creek? Alan Davis. He does. Sue, language, player pass. Play. The word cliché originates from which language? French. That's right. Jeff, music, do you want to play or pass? I play. Which band had a hit last year with the song Reach? Steps. No, it was the other one. S Club 7. S Club 7. Oh, Jeff. Okay. It's not so much a long haul flight as a short journey home, Jeff. Bye bye. Thanks. We continue the game with Mark. Let's start the clock. The categories film Mark, player pass. Can I play, please? Which actress starred opposite Harrison Ford in What Lies Beneath? Pass. It was Michelle Pfeiffer. You're in the red. Sue Nature, player pass. Play. Which endangered animal is the symbol for the World Wildlife Fund? A panda. Yes. Julia, geography, player pass. Pass to Sue. Sue, Boston is the capital of which US state? Massachusetts. That puts Julia in the red. Well done. Mark Sport, player pass. Can I play, please? Steve McManaman plays for which Spanish football club? Real Madrid. You are right. Sue, literature, player pass. Play. Which author wrote the novels Popcorn and Inconceivable? Ben Elton. It was. Mark, science, player pass. Can I play, please? On the periodic table, which element is represented by the symbol PB? Lead. Yes. Sue, film, player pass. Play. Who is the runaway bride in the film of the same name? Is it Julia Roberts? It is Julia Roberts. Mark, music player, pass. Play, please. What's the surname of the sisters? The surname of the sisters in the pop group All Saints. Appleton. Julia, the red light stares on you, and the jet set has gone. Oh, but congratulations to Mark and to Sue. They're through to the next round. The Jet Set Life is uh, nearly within their grasp. Two more rounds to decide just who will be flying off to tonight's destination. But before we tell you where that is, you could be about to change your life beyond your wildest dreams because it's time for tonight's Thunderball Draw.
Saturday night, six minutes to eight, and it is time for tonight's Thunderbolt draw. It's live on the National Lottery Jet Set with who else but Eamon Holmes. Bye, Salad. Draw master, John Willen. Please release those balls, John. And don't forget, it's 34 balls in this machine, 14 Thunderbolts in the next. You choose five from the first, just one from the second, and the prizes range from a fiver to a cool quarter of a million pounds. Eamon. Very nice too, Alan. Good luck to all of you. Here comes the first of tonight's numbers. Don't forget to be in with a better chance of winning a prize. You need at least one of the five numbers from this, our first machine. There's the first one, number four. And the next, number nine. Let's have a third one. Number 12. A couple more needed from this machine. 14. Working well. And the fifth one. 24. OK, John, start up the second machine now, if you would, and then we can release the red Thunderballs. There they go. As ever, scrutinising tonight's Thunderball draw for us, an independent adjudicator taking on that task tonight, Sean Fleet. Eamon. So all we need is the Thunderball. Remember, if you match any number plus the Thunderball, it boosts your prize. So fingers crossed, here we go. They are bouncing about a bit. Draw is about to happen. There is that number, number 12. Tonight's Thunderball numbers again. Here they are, this time in ascending order. Number four. Number nine. Number 12. Number 14. And number 24, the Thunderball this weekend. It's number 12. Still to come tonight, the National Lottery Draw and this weekend's Lottery Extra. Right now, someone's about to take a step nearer to joining the Jet Set. Right, back to the game. Two contestants left on Jet Set. Mark Hobson from Somerset against Sue Jeffrey from North Wales. One of them will be facing Jez Chesters. He's watching from Aspen, Colorado for the chance to live the next week on Cloud9 somewhere in the world. Let's have a word with uh, Jez. Jez, I got to tell you, the standard of contestant in the studio is not getting any easier. That's right, Eamon. They've all been excellent this week. And, of course, Laura is by Jez's side there. And uh, with Mark and Sue, they've got their respective partners, Mark's wife, Tracy, Sue's husband, Michael. Uh, will it be Valentine's Day in the pub or in paradise? <laughs> that is the question. Once again, I'm going to give Mark and Sue a question category, and they have got to play or pass. They get a point if they answer a question correctly or if their opponent gets one wrong. It's the first to four points, four points. So go through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's do it. Let's play for the jet set. Mark and Sue and everyone at home now knows that Jez and Laura have spent a week skiing out there in Aspen, Colorado. And uh, to decide who goes first, it is a general knowledge question on Colorado. So fingers on your buzzers, here it is. In which film do the characters Lloyd and Harry... <coughs> Mark? Dumb and Dumber. ...follow Mary Swanson to Aspen, and it is Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Nothing dumb about you. Mark, the category is history. Do you want to play or pass? Uh, can I play, please? Yes, you certainly can. Here comes the question. Which British monarch succeeded Queen Victoria? Succeeded Queen Victoria. Was it George V? It was not. It was Edward VII. So the point goes to Sue, OK? Sue, here is your category. It is film. Do you want to play or pass? I'll play. She's going to have a go, and here's the question. Which actor is the voice of Rocky the Rooster in Chicken Run? Is it Tom Hanks? It's Mel Gibson. One apiece. Mark, the category is politics. It's all square. Do you want to play or pass? Can I play on politics, please? Here's the question. What colour are the benches in the House of Lords? In the House of Lords, they're... Red. They are red, and you're 2-1 up. Well done. Sue, the category's TV. Player pass. Play. 
Who plays Agent Fox Mulder in The X-Files? David D D Chovny. I'll give it to you, Duchovny. It stays level pegging. Mark, the category this time is geography. Do you want to play that one or pass it? Play. Please. Okay, it's the first of four, remember. This to go 3-2 up. Mount Fuji is situated in which country? Gotta hurry you. Japan. You've got the lead. <laughs> Sue. Music is your category. Do you want to play or play. pass? She's going to play it. Okay, this to draw level again. Karis Matthews is the lead singer of which pop group? Oh, they're Welsh and they're Catatonia. And it's 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> this is it, Mark. Your destiny's in your own hands. Get this one right and you're in the head-to-head. -head. If you mess up, Sue will be there in your place. And the category is science. Do you want to play or pass? Well, I've got to do it, I've got to play. In the human body, what do the dermis and epidermis make up? The dermis and the epidermis make up what? Your skin. You think it's your skin. You're in the head-to-head, -head, Mark! <laughs> oh, I tell you, I don't know how you feel. I feel I'm all overcome. Goodness me. Sue, hard luck to you. You just did, weren't hey, able to make up the ground there. Just not meant to be, was it? Well, Jez, I have to say, Mark's going to be your opponent. He's a bundle of nerves in great contrast to you because you're as cool as that snow around you, a lot of people are saying. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that, but I'll just try and keep a poker face. So, as we know, it's Mark against Jez. Where are they going? Take a look at this. So far on the Jet Set Tour, we've been swanning around in Sydney, lording it in Las Vegas, carousing in the Caribbean, and alpine sporting in Aspen. This week, how about Bermuda? Yes, it's back to the sun, and you'll be basking in luxury. Tropical paradises just don't come more heavenly. This tiny island oozes exclusivity and style, the perfect destination for a couple on St. Valentine's Day. Fancy a round of golf with spectacular views? What about a gentle amble on some four-legged transport? Or who's for swimming with the dolphins? Bermuda is our next stop on Jet Set. Before we find out whether it will be Lauren Jez or Mark and his wife Tracy heading off to Bermuda, let's uh, give some of you at home the chance to win a dream life. Coming up in just a moment, we've got the National Lottery Draw and Lottery Extra. Now, of course, we do not want Jez or Mark to see the balls drawn. So it is on with blindfolds, I'm afraid, for um, both of you. And we've got uh, headphones, music in the headphones. That music is played backwards to confuse them even more. So, now for Jez, for Mark, and maybe for you at home, the future lies in the balls. It's time for the National Lottery Draw and Lottery Extra. <laughs> Drawmaster John Willen, please release the balls for tonight's National Lottery Draw. from now we'll find out whether Jez moves on to an island paradise or would it be Mark who flies out to Bermuda. Meanwhile we're live on BBC One and Radio 5 Live now with a national lottery draw at nearly three minutes past eight. Eamon. The estimated prize fund tonight in the national lottery draw is 21.4 million pounds. <laughs> the estimated jackpot, a fabulous 6.7 million. Good luck everyone, here we go. And tonight we're using Merlin Incentables number three, chosen earlier today by Gemma Milbank from Crawley. Here we go, the first one is number 12. That completed Millionaire's Right the Saturday before last here on Jet Set. 77th time now it's been drawn. Next. 32. Last time that appeared was all of nine Saturdays back. 75th time it's appeared in the National Lottery, the third one. Number seven. Last time that emerged was from Merlin half a dozen weekends ago. 67th time as a main ball. Next. Number 20, 67th time we've seen that now as a main ball. We need a fifth one. 17. First number to be drawn on last Saturday's Jet Set with Eamon. 76th appearance for that one. And the sixth is number nine. Well, I saw that some seven Wednesdays by 85th lottery appearance. But if you need a bonus, let me tell you that tonight's is, in fact, number 30. This weekend's 
winning numbers again. Here they are in ascending order. Number seven. Number nine. Number 12. Number 17. Number 20. And number 32. And the bonus is number 30. Alan, just trying to remember the order there because even if you didn't win, remember the order in which those balls come out because that's going to be very useful later on in the show. Not for you, but for the contestants. But anyway, try and remember them. Right now, here's another chance for you to change your life with the Lottery Extra. So, draw master, please release the balls for tonight's extra draw. Round and round they go. No jackpot winner on Wednesday, so as happens with Lottery Extra, the jackpot just gets bigger. So, Eamon, to what extent can the two of us brighten up somebody's Saturday <laughs> night? <laughs> Nothing we can mention at this time of the night, Alan, but uh, what about a jackpot of £1.5 million? Pounds? What about that? That'll be very nice. Good luck, here we go. And for tonight's Lottery Extra, we're using Vivian and set of extra balls number three, again chosen by Gemma Milbank from Crawley. 39 is the first number. Remember the rules, you need all six numbers in the next 60 seconds or so to have a stake in tonight's one and a half million pound jackpot. 36 is the next number. No winner tonight, we'll have a bigger jackpot on Wednesday, as I mentioned, that's in Manchester. And that is number nine. We've had a lot of those tonight. Let's have another number. 14! Don't forget, Lottery Extra played for a jackpot only. No smaller prizes along the way. We're playing for the big one. And this is number 12. We just need the sixth number, which you do need. Number 10! OK, here are tonight's Lottery Extra numbers in ascending order. That's number 9. Number 10. Number 12. Number 14, 36, and 39. Now let's find out who's going to be flying out to Bermuda, the next destination on our Jet Set World Tour. Thank you. Yes, it's winner takes all now in the final of Jet Set. Bermuda's waiting for the winner, the bus home waiting for the loser. And, uh, of course, if you'd like to play for a whole week or maybe more of the very best life has to offer, the number to call there on your screen, our contestant hotline, 0900 1 Please do give us a ring. It may be worth your while. You could be sitting here next week, remember. We're now going to cut the music in the headphones, both here and in Colorado. We remove the headphones and the blindfolds and bring these two back into the land of the living. Now, we know Mark's wife, Tracy, is rooting for him. She's keeping the seat warm in our airport uh, limo. But, uh, Jez, one of the drawbacks of being away for you, not that there are many, but one must be not being able to keep up with your passion for Leeds United, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, have I got news for you, my friend, because here is someone with a few words for you. So let's now say hello to the manager of Leeds United, the top man, David O'Leary. Hello, Eamon. Hello, Jess. We all know you cheer us on down at Dellen Road, but tonight we're all cheering you on and hope that you can score yourself another winner this week with the Jet Set. Fingers crossed and good luck, mate. Well, what about that? What about that for a pep talk, hey? Uh, absolutely unbelievable. I mean, he's the governor, you know what I mean? And a vote of confidence for him, I've got to go all the way tonight. This is a question and answer battle, the first of three points. Will it be Mark or Jez heading for Bermuda? Let's find out as we play for the Jet Set. This is where the first six balls from tonight's National Lottery draw can be a real help. The first ball drawn tonight was 12. There it is. Mark, you're our studio winner. You're going first. What you've got to do is decide whether the next ball out was higher or lower. That for the right to pick your own category, OK? That's your first task. What do you think? Higher or lower than 12? I think it's going to be higher. He thinks it's higher. Let's see if he's right. You're in the ball game. Well done. Done. Let's see your categories. Literature, music, politics, food and drink, art and sport. Those are tonight's subjects. Choose one for yourself, Mark. Can I have literature, please? OK, he's going with literature. And here is the question. 
The Day of the Jackal concerns a plot to kill which French president? Charles de Gaulle. You're one up. Well done. Okay. Hello there, Jez. We're ready now with the ball sequence for you, Jez. We've got 12. We've got 32. Higher or lower than 32? Oh, I've got to go lower, Eamon. He's going lower. Let's see. Yes, you're on a number seven. Jez, just so you know the categories, literature, music, politics, food and drink, art or sport, choose one. Um, I'll take politics, please, Ivan. He's going for politics. Let's get the question. And here it is. I'm looking for a year here, Jez. In which year did Ronald Reagan become the President of the United States? In which year? I believe that was 1980. You're one year out, Jez, and Mark goes two up. 1981 was the answer for that. OK, Mark, we're back to you. You're one point away, Mark, from the Jet Set lifestyle. Is it slipping from Jez's grasp? The whole country is looking in. 12, 32, 7, higher or lower than 7? Seven? 7's my lucky number, so I'm going to go higher. He's going higher. I think he's right to do so. Number 20. What's your category? Can I have sports, please? Sport, okay. Sport is the subject. On this question, is the jet set life finally going to be taken away from jazz? Let's find out. It all rests on this. Mark, your question for the jet set. Which female athlete won the heptathlon gold at the Sydney 2000 Olympics? Denise Lewis. You thought it was Denise Lewis. You're right, Sydney. Yes! 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 Well done. Well done. You are over the moon. You are over the moon. So many people tuning in, wondering, of course, where you'll be going. You're off to Bermuda. Let's take a look where you and Tracy are going. Yes, Mark and Tracy, you've done it. You're off to spend the next seven days in paradise. You'll be lost in a Bermuda Triangle of luxury, elegance and style. It's the perfect lover's retreat for an unforgettable Valentine's Day. Congratulations, you are heading for Bermuda. You can explore the jasmine-scented island. You can take to the subtropical waters around it. It's a perfect lover's retreat, this. You'll have a fabulous time and you are heading for Bermuda. Oh. Two destinations like that? No, I mean, we fly to places like Belfast and Liverpool. Nothing as exciting as well, Bermuda. Well, you get off. We've got the car waiting. We've got Tracy out there. Off you go to the airport. <laughs> Jez! Jez, before we go, Jez, we thought it would never end, Jez. Jez and Laura, how are you feeling? Well, we had a very good run. Four weeks, you know what I mean? Couldn't ask for anything more. Really enjoyed it. Cheers. Look, you've been brilliant. We're going to have you back in the studio next Saturday night. What about that? We're going to see them then back in Britain. Jez Chester's Laura Gold. Thank you to them. Thank you for watching. See you next Saturday night. Bye bye. Did it. Going by the book next on BBC One Casualty.